Uh, hello, welcome viewers. We are back. It's the Homebrew Campaign, 2nd edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. This is Chapter 6, The Home City. Guys, we're back. Let's go. <laughs> now, as as you can see, viewers, I've got Snake Nook under David. We're we're living in hope that he's gonna make it back to Father Baron and get resurrected. So I'll recap the last session real quick and you guys can chip in here as well so you made it through the crypts under dragon watch castle after defeating a death knight and you made it to here the site of elrahar's tree which is a famous elven site of worship and just outside of the city of rockcomb uh you fought with beside the Throne Warden of the the city, which is the name for the the city guard in the Dwarven city, against a bunch of Durgar and Steeders, you defeated them. Um, Kiara, you're using that lightning bolt so efficiently to get a couple of those Steeders was one of the highlights of the battle. And you sadly lost one of the Throne Wardens in that fight, Bardrak Thundermace, to poison from one of the Steeders. And when we left it, the the group of you, plus Ulrich Great Axe, Daryl's cousin, Throne Morden, were running back to Rockholm and the Church of Barakthram. And you have Bardrak Thundermace with you, so Ulrich's carrying him. And you're trying to, you're running back to the city of Rockholm. We have some ink. It's a body wrapped in a scarf of resurrection strapped to Charlemagne's back. Scarf of resurrection, keep winning. Keep uh, wishing it's a scarf of everlasting yeah. preservation. So his Waiting. charred body is yeah. not deteriorating any worse. It's not yes. uh, going mouldy, but he's not, de he's he's not, not de decomposing. Uh, yes, he's, he's, no, he's not decomposing through magical means, uh, but he's still a bloody stump. For he died in a, a fireball attack from a giant skeleton. Uh, if you guys want to chip in, anything in about the recap before we move on, feel free now. I chipped in the part. Would, 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 was a wonder to see that lightning bolt. I, I think Tiara deserves a, a, a vote of thanks from the city. <laughs> okay. She's not bad for a non dwarf. I really hope I really hope you make it back to this to the church to Father Better and get Stinky Nook resurrected. Although I have loved your accents when you've been playing uh Fargrim and Ogrim, the Battle Hammer Brothers. It's been fantastic, David. I'll miss them. But you never know. Well, what, is it, what, what was it, eighty five percent chance you've got of being resurrected? If I was if he does it. You're insulting David's capabilities as a player there. He can definitely play Three people in one game. I know he can. <laughs> I'm sure he could. I'm absolutely <laughs> sure he could. The viewers will have no doubt tuned into David running an another game on my channel, the Bushido campaign, where he manages a, a whole bunch of NPCs oh. and us idiots through a amazing campaign and a great time. So, I've written a little bit of a monologue for you. Um, I'm no writer, but I will give you... It might not be the best, but I'll give you this. And this is as you're running, hobbling, marching, skipping to rock home. The group of you plus Ulrich with the dead from Poison, Bardrak, Thunder, Mace and Toe. As you hurry through rock home, you see a city under siege. Houses and stores have their windows barred. Soldiers patrol every street. Most looking exhausted, wounded, and in many cases, both. The city's smiths are the cause of all the sound you hear. The constant hammering of metal through the ancient caverns echoes like the heartbeats of a thousand soldiers played in the drums of war. Uh, where the children once played Darrow in your home city in the streets, they're empty, save for the occasional patrolling soldiers. The sounds of joy and laughter you remember from your youth and growing up here, Darrow, it's gone. Now you hear only the clang of the hammers of hammers on steel of the smiths 
it drowns out the cries of pain from the city's many churches where the priests and clerics are working round the clock trying to save or even just comfort the dying, the maimed and the mutilated of war. If you listen close, you're sure that even you hear the sound of dwarves weeping. A sound so unfamiliar, you're not sure. You might even be imagining it. Mm. A huge stone shield is inlaid above the doors of the Church of Barakram. The symbol it bears is now so familiar to all of you that for a second you all feel like you're home. The three great axes that adorn the shield in triangular formation that you're so familiar with now are as big, if not bigger, than Darrow's own. This is the holy symbol of Barakram. This is the Church of Barakram. The enormous doors under the symbol are open, but not all the way open like they would be normally, Darrow, as if someone waits behind them, ready to close them at any moment. You see, as you approach, a group of dwarves looking towards you, expecting you, or expecting someone at least, Darrow. Darrow, every one of these faces is familiar. And I'll move you to the next map before we, before we move on, actually. Yeah. You should have vision and see the people awaiting you. I'll move them into sight in a moment on the screen. So you see Darrow, mm -hmm. a group of dwarves looking towards you. Like I said, expecting you or at least expecting someone. Every one of the faces is familiar, but some more than others, Darrow. Your mother and father stand here, Karina and Davin Greataxe. Father Beren and Elenia, Eliana Irontoe, another high-ranking priest here that you know well enough. None of these surprise you at all, but some of the others do. It's obvious to not just Darrow, but to all of you, who the dwarf standing next to Father Beren is, the crown on his head on top of his grey hair gives it away. You look upon the King of Rockholm, Kendrick Drakesbane. Behind the King's a young dwarf who you Darrow recognise. Prince Brogor Drakesbane, the King's youngest son. On the King's right hand side you see Barrack Silverspear, a grudge bearer of Rockholm, and his nephew the grudge bearer of Rockholm, so grudge bearer is Sheriff. It's the dwarf equivalent. And his nephew Drekken both the king's personal guard. Mm. And the scene is yours. Oh, Darrow Dar leads the way in and then looks surprised to see those people. Your mum and dad. Your mum, your dad. Another priest of well, they're 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 priests of the Church of Barakram, so that's not a surprise to Darrow. It, it, so it's you, it's looking surprised to see the king and his party. The king, his son, and his personal guards. So these four on this side are no surprise to Darrow. They're who we expected to see here. These four are a bit of a surprise. So the two dwarfs standing next to the king and the the prince are like in what, what you what we joke about the tin can the dwarven armor dwarven full plate armor these are dwarven full plate armor so like it's a walking walking tin can like there's no space you see like a slit for eyes a tiny little slit for maybe like down here and that's it you can't even tell it's a dwarf behind it except for the shape of it uh, I have got descriptions of the dwarfs. Let's say they take their helmets off, the two of them, when you all approach. So these are a couple so this of... Is, the, this is the entrance here, these doors. Uh, so, no, we'll say this is the door. And you see, there's there's two guards here, actually. So, so these two guys, I didn't describe in the introduction. These are another two king's guard. Uh, sorry, we're not above ground anymore. Another two... Uh, throne warden. These two are the ones I've got descriptions for. So these ones you maybe don't know. 
So I've got these are Duke and Brown Rock and Balgrith Copper Forge. Both members of the King's Guards. These guys, you do see their faces, so that's why I've got the descriptions. Balgriff Copper Forge is bald headed and grey bearded. Wears a patch over a heavily scarred hole where the ones, ones an eye, his face, neck, and hands are all heavily scarred, and half an ear is missing. So this dwarf is obviously a veteran of many battles. And a younger dwarf next to him is heavily tattooed, including all over his face with red hair tied back in neat braids and a braided beard. These are the two that you first meet on the door, sorry. These two here. Now, I have got names for them. And you should be able to see them, I think. Once I save. Ah. There yeah. you are. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> I've done that for all the tokens, so that as, as you meet them, I can put their names up. So that's Duke and Brown, Rock and Balgrip, Copper Forge, a couple of... The wars of so, the... I, so are those... Because at the moment it looks like there's closed doors in front of us. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sorry, no. They shouldn't... There shouldn't be. Ignore those. Everything on yeah. the map's correct, apart from that door's wide open. You see all these people. They look... They've got are expectant we, looks. Are we challenged as we pass the first two? No. They st even step aside to let the large party get past easier. Uh, and they'll give you a nod, actually, as you all, as you all march past these two throne warden. I need to remember it's the throne warden. We are underground now with the dwarfs. It's not the king's guard. These two throne warden will give you a nod of approval and step back a guard of honour, even, as you go through. Right. So I... I enter the room and then I... See uh, the that the king is there. Yep, the and king I is say, there. Ah, uh, your Majesty, I'm sorry, I am interrupting a meeting. Not at all, Darrow. But it's you that we're waiting for. Come in, bring in said your friends. Hurry. Let the guards close the doors. We're a city under siege. Please. So you are waiting for... Uh... For you. Yes, I I had a vision of Barak Thram and my father calling me to make haste back. Darrow's mother and father, Davin, and Karina Great Axe, they're their faces light up with joy at seeing their son back. The king, the king smiles. The king is pleased to see you, Darrow. Father, no. Ber Father Beren. No. Uh, son, it's it's so good to see you. And your mum, your mum's gonna. Oh, do you run over your mum? Your mum's gonna run over and hug you. Like it may not even be a dwarfs may not be the most affectionate of the races, but mum and dad are both gonna hug Darrow. Mum's crying. It's so good to see you, son. Saying, what sort of time do you call this to get back? <laughs> son, I knew, we, so we, we, we knew you would come. Yeah, I, I then introduce... Uh... Oh, the, the, the Battle Brothers will... Uh, yes, I, in, in, uh, I, I think, I think you've all got control in. of the Battle Brothers now, but... I'll move them in. So let's see if... Oh, in fact, let's bring up the tokens for the... Uh, I'm going to bring up the tokens for the people on screen as well. Uh, bring up the name, sorry. So Eliana Irontoe. She's a, a high-ranking priest here, Darrow, and she looks she looks old. You've only been away a few months, but she looks years older. Right? Your father, yeah. Davin, looks... Right now, he looks really, really pleased to see you, but you can tell there's pain and suffering underneath it. Same with your mother. Yeah. Um, are Ogrim and Fargrim originally locals? No. Well, yeah, they will be. Sorry, they are. Or their father was. Their father was from here. And they say his, their father settled back in... <laughs> I can't remember. Their father settled there, sorry. They are from... Uh, their father is from here. Right, okay. 
Uh, they they will bow politely and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, your uh, your uh, their, 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 their father sends his, uh, his his best wishes, and uh, uh, they're here to escort uh, uh, the 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 the, uh, uh, the priest who's uh, on quest for the for the god, and uh, he's supported yeah. by some non dwarves as well. Uh, Actually, quite good blocks here, Your Majesty. Anyway, we'll 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 pass you on to him. And they kind of move Your off Majesty and Father Beren, those are the battle brothers. Uh, Father Beren will speak. And old grip. No, I've got I've got this written down. I've got notes about what he's going to say. Battle Hammer about. Brothers. I should have said. Yeah, the Battle Hammer Brothers. Father ba Father Beren's going to speak to you, and Father Beren. Darrow, although he was an old dwarf already, Father Beren looks ancient. Father Beren looks to have aged 50 years in the Ooh. two months you've been away or whatever. Father Beren is leaning on his hammer that he once used to swing around, twirl around like it was a toy. He used to spin mm. around in his fingers like it was a toy. Now he leans on it to walk. His, his, his once grey beard is pure white and thin. And his hair is thin, and he looks tired and old, and his skin is wrinkled. And he's going to speak to you, Barrow. I spoke with Barakram of your coming. Not just you, your friends. I know all of them. Kiara, the girl with the fire in her heart. You choose your friends wisely, Darrow. You have Anne the Makar, the pride of all elves, the elf blade. Honourable and good, a credit to his whole race. You bring the finest allies to Barakram's home. The brothers battle hammer, real heroes that heard the call of Barakram and came without a single thought or a single look back to his aid. And Eleonora, somehow an elven faithful of Barakram, guardian of his sword. And Sninkinuk, the scourge of the drow, whose work is yet to begin. He must come back to us in this realm of life. I know why you're here, Daryl. Yeah. So, so you have heard that Sninkinuk fell again. Helping to guide, helping us find the way. He fell for Barakram. Um, I know all about the gnome, the deep gnome. I know uh -huh. all. I know the story. Barakram has, has, has given me visions and dreams, and I've heard it all. Daro. Bring him back. Right. The king must talk with you, Daro. The king has has things to tell you. And yes. you look and you look in there's something obvious, Darrow, as well. So let's say around here there's be a big statue of Barakram, okay? And normally yeah. it, and normally it carries the axe of Barakram, the holy re relic, and it's missing. And you know what the king's gonna tell you because that's not there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Father Beren will say, yeah, the king, the king has to talk to you, Darrow. The the, the the city, dwarven kind needs you. You're, you're, you know you know to save us. To yeah, yeah. So Darrow remembers that the sword of Barakram went missing. The sword of Barakram is with the humans in Silver Hall now. It was almost lost to us, but yeah. the axe of Barakram is lost, Darrow. But the king will tell you. And he, uh. and he, and he leans, he looks really tired, and he, and he leans on his hammer. And it's like he almost closes his eyes and micro naps for a second, and he wakes up again. Like he's really looking old and old, 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 Father Baron. Mm -hmm. Is everybody in the room by now? You guys moving your own tokens? Yeah, sorry. I just didn't. I didn't want to interrupt that by moving my tokens. I no, you're all good. You're all good. Let's go. 
But yes, Kiara's in here and she's got she, she's telling him to be on his best behaviour, so she's got him right beside her. Father she, Baron looks at you, Kiara. He's, and he looks in your eyes and he says, I can see the fire. Barakthram was true what he told me. Every word. Daru does choose wisely. You choose the company of elves and half-elves, Daru, but you seem to choose the best of them. And he stops again and micro-naps. The king waits patiently. The king's son, the prince, hasn't said a word to anyone yet. The two, the king's two personal guard haven't said a word. Eliana hasn't said a word. Davin and Karina, they, they've hugged Daru. It's so good to see you, son. We knew you'd be back. But that's it. I take it from there. The scene is yours from there. Who you want to interact with, who you want to talk to first. Well, I think Daru needs to speak to the king. Although I've, Kiara mm -hmm. is just desperately waiting to speak to this little dwarven Yoda to see and tell him how important it is that he brings Stinky back and that he died for Barak Fram and that he's a hero and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, but I think Daru needs to speak to the king. Uh, so you're planning on charming Father Bear and uh, you must well, you must save this just gnome. Plead in, just plead in, just Father, have respiration. Father Bear has already mentioned he needs to be brought back. So. I know, I know, uh, but that's, that's all Kiara heard. Yeah, I bet. It looks like he's been raising a lot of people over the last months. Yeah. This, this could be too much for him. Yeah. Oh. Uh, is, is there a rod of resurrection or something that we could uh, go and quest for? Uh, your, your Majesty. Uh, yes. You have. Now uh, should probably move across. Don't know where the dwarves go into this kneeling business. Um, mm, I think dwarves are more humble than that. It's, it'll be a, a bow. And it'll be a, a warrior's handshake, I, I no doubt, to your king. Because your king's yeah. a warrior king. It'll be a warrior handshake. You'll give him the, the, the dwarven, no doubt. Probably the, the best handshake yeah. you've ever had, because it's the king. Yeah. Your majesty. My son. You... It seems that you have a mission for me. As you can see, the axe of Barakthrum is gone. As you can see, the city is under siege by the drought, Arrow. We were winning the war. We've 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 been we've been beating the Durgar back for for decades now and it was getting better and the raids were less and less and they've allied with the drought and now the city's under siege. And recently they raided the church and they've taken the axe of Barakram. There's a there's a, a Durgar the size of a they say the size of a hill giant wielding his axe against us, killing our own dwarves with the axe of Barakram. They, huh. they call him the Slayer. His name doesn't translate into the dwarven tongue. He's the Slayer of dwarves, but the way, the way they say it, we can't even put a dwarven tongue around it. It's sacrilege that a believer should have the axe. Slayed many, many dwarves with it already, Daru, and I need you to get that axe back from only, only you can 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 the champion of Barak Thram can get this weapon back for us. And that's where he comes in. And he looks at his son behind him and the son will step forward a little bit. This is my third son, Brogo Drakesbane. And you'll know that the king has two other sons. Give me two secs, I'll get get their names. Uh Benric and Hordak. To his two older sons. And they both live in different parts of the country where they're married to like lords daughters from other big parts of the country you know like as princes do they move around and they marry other princesses but this is his son that still lives in Rockholm and you know of him Darrow you know about you everyone knows the king and and, and his wife the queen and they, they have three sons um but Brugar steps forward and this is Dad a great axe. Great honour to meet you. 
And he bows low and puts out his hand for a handshake. Oh, it's an honour to meet you, your highness. Says Stero, who is quite sure why he wants well, talking him up so much. Well, Darrow, if things go my way here today, that will be the last time you'll ever call me your highness. And he looks at his dad, and his dad looks at you. And his dad looks at the king, looks at Father Beren. Father Beren says, Darrow, the prince wishes to become a champion of Barak Ram. And yeah. the king wishes to send his son with you wherever you go to learn to be the next champion of Barak Thram. But the king has, the king, you know, he wants you to retrieve the axe of Barak Thram. The city, dwarf and kind, needs you to retrieve the axe of Barak Thram. It's, 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 it's more important than you know. It sounds it, but, uh, yes, but, but I, yes, my father is also a great champion of Barak Thram. Davin looks at you, says, yeah, I once was, son. My days are, my days are gone now, I'm... I'm just a priest of Barakram these days. My my days as a champion are over. My axe is hung up long ago. You've done me proud. You've you're you're more the champ. You're a, a bigger champion than I ever was, son. And I I couldn't be more more proud of you. You've 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 made me the the most proud dwarf in the city and in, in the world. Um, it's it it's it's an honour to call you my son. And he's got tears in his eyes as he says this. Uh, but I can only do th I could not have overcome I could not have reached here without the aid of my companions at this point so the Bardrak Thunder Mace gets dragged through by Ulrich Greyaxe your cousin ah yes your, your, dad, your father will say Father Bellerin has told us all about your companions, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's one more, isn't there? That's why you come to the church. One of you. You can look well as you, as Father Barrett has said, he was scorched in the flames of an undead monstrosity. Okay, at this point, the Duke in at Brown Rock and Balgrith Copper Forge, the two guys that appear, they'll, they'll close the big doors now. There's, there's, there's no time, there's no time for ceremony. Darrow, Father Baron will say, come, let's do this. Yeah. And he's going to move over to, very slowly, Father Baron's going to move over to the altar of Barak Thram. Come, Daryl. Bring your friend. Uh, Daryl takes, uh, goes and fetches Stinky Luke's body. Do you hand it over, Kiara? You're carrying him. Um, no, I'm going to carry him up. You're coming up. Okay. I've kept them safe this whole time. Anybody oh, else? Anybody else approaching? Plus, I want to see what they're doing. Somebody open up the rule book and tell me how long resurrection takes takes to cast, and what he has to have prepared and stuff. See if me doing it. Might might be better if he does the raise dead on the dwarf first. Nope. He's not going to do that. Eliana Iron Toe. He says, bring him here. Only I'll... takes one... Uh, uh, it's one round for Ray's dead. Won't take him long. I'll get the I'll get the dwarf. <laughs> Eliana says, I must. Please. Father Beren. We'll get your friends. Resurrection. Casting time is one turn. Ten, so ten minutes. Okay. Uh, 
Ulrich is going to bring Bardrak over to Eliana Iron Toe. Now, Raise Dead, you've got up, David. Well, Raise Dead and Resurrection. Well, first Raise Eliana. Dead only takes a round. First, Eliana's going to cast Raise Dead mm -hmm. on Bardrak Thunder Mace. Well, in fact, no. First, because you're going to tell him, you you tell her how someone tells her how he died, and she will cast neutralized poison first, won't she? Makes sense. Yeah. yeah so she's going to cast neutralized poison on Bardrak Thunder Mace, and then she does the incantations and the gestures and lays out the the material components. Someone's looking at what they are, and she casts. Raised dead. No material components. No verbal no, and somatic. Verbal and somatic only. She Correct. does. Yes. She does the movements. She says the words, and miraculously, Badrak Thunder Mace is no longer makes dead. Makes a constitution roll. Makes, oh, he a, makes constitution a constitution roll. roll. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let me check out his sheet. Uh, What's his name? Badrak Thunder Mace. I have a sheet here. His constitution is 14. So resurrection survival is 92%. Would someone like to roll for him? Darren, oh. you're, the, uh, you're in charge. Yeah. yeah. The dice roller, the pitch, the layout's different from how it used to be. Oh. Three. Nice. Now, is it raised dead also where you come back with one less constitution? Yes, indeed. The yeah. constitution is now 13. So I need to update his sheet, which I think I closed. No, I didn't. It's here. So his constitution goes down to 13. Okay. Bardrak, Thunder Mace. Oh, his saves have got worse. Yep. So, uh you alive, though. Yeah. Yep. But they're both three and a half points of constitution, so going from 14 to 13, at least if it is, I think it's three and a half. Yeah, it is. It is three and a half. So, you see Bardrak Thunder Mace raised from the literal dead by Eliana Arnto. Now, he... You'd only taken two points of bite damage. He's hale and healthy when the poison's neutralised and he's been raised dead. He is in good nick. Now, we move to Father Baron. What's the components? The holy symbol and some holy water. Now, apologies to Kiara because she was all ready to convince Father Baron to do this. But Father Baron, okay. Father Baron was awaiting this. Father Baron knew this was coming. No, she's happy she's not having to convince her. She's just ready to plead, like like ready to trade her, trade her own years for, for his and to bring him back. Did we say it was holy water is the only material component? And a holy symbol. And a holy symbol. And, yeah. That'll. So as he's as he's preparing he's laying out Snankinook's burnt stump of a corpse in front of the altar of Barak Graham. Whose hands are empty, doesn't hold the axe of Barak Graham. He says, Darrow, Darrow, come closer. Come closer, Darrow. Mm -hmm. And this is like nine minutes into the ritual. He's almost finished. Darrow, it's time your mother told you the truth. She must tell you the truth. You must, before you leave, plead with your mother mm -hmm. for the whole truth. And then he, he steps away from you again. And he finishes the casting. And Sninky Nook, you've got to roll 88% or under. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, dear. <laughs> I forgot to tell you about the plus 10 you've got from Barak Thram. I was always going to let you survive. You had a 98% chance. I just didn't want to let you know before you rolled it. So yeah, you, you make it. 
Despite my best efforts. Despite your best efforts not to. Everyone's going to say I'm soft, but I always had a ten plus ten percent chance written into that. I always wanted Sneaky Nook back. His name is on the overlay. So, come on. Now this would be visually quite, quite stunning because what you see is a charred little stump of a body. It's like. Uh, like a stump at the top of the neck. There's a stump, almost stumps where arms and legs used to be. This is a little burnt little chicken nugget. And you see it like miraculously like change colour and sprout arms. And But it doesn't just sprout arms and legs and a head. It sprouts its clothes and its armour and its earrings and his, his little glasses that he was wearing before and everything just magically grows back. And you see in front of you your friend, you've not seen him in a long time. Oh, thank you. Do I remember Gold Glitter Gold's paradise that I've been ripped from? Do you come back with one hit point, is it? No, no. No, with with, with resurrection, you come back fully functional. Do you? It's raised dead that you come oh, back and you've got to rest up for. Raised dead, you've got to rest up for one day for every day you've been dead. But you lose. So, you do come back with one less constitution as well, though, don't you? No. No? Oh, you come back no. with your full constitution from resurrection. My God. Yeah. Okay. So it's the priest who has the problem. So, well, with Barak Thumb's blessing, and it really did matter, because I wrote in a plus ten percent chance of that. So I'll give him plus ten, I'll make it ninety eight percent, but I won't tell him beforehand. <laughs> so well. you needed it. Oh. You needed it. It mattered. That was the end of Sninkinook. If I hadn't given you that beforehand, you needed it and it mattered. Oh, yeah. Sninkinook is back Come alive. On. But, well, he's shocked. I mean, I mean, does he remember Gold Glitter Gold's Paradise? This no. is, see, here's the thing: you do, you do, you do, for a second, and it, it, it all just, it all disappears. You can see it all, but it all disappears, and in front of you, all you see is warring drow faces and drow soldiers with anger and rage in their eyes, swinging swords towards you, and then your vision flashes away from this and. You're in a church, a dwarven one, and there's a old man, an old, old, old man of a dwarf above you. You do remember what happened to you just before you died, yes. Yeah. But the dwarf, the dwarf that's kneeling above you now, says, "It's good to see you, Sninkinook. Welcome to Rockholm. Welcome to the Church of Paragon." And he's, he kneels over you. He's, he's kneeling over you, and you're still lying down. He's, he'll kiss your forehead. And then he closes his eyes and just keels over. Huh? Kara will go over and grab the baby. Yeah, goes and tries to support him. Uh, I suppose give me a strength roll, see if you catch him. Yeah. Uh, just just strength or under. Uh, what, D20 roll? Yeah, D20 roll, strength or under. Uh, I'm not looking at the rules for this session. Yes, you make it. So you catch Father Bear and he doesn't crack his head open. But you catch him and Darrow, he's, he lands in your arms. The dwarf is not breathing. He's uh, pa he's he's past, he's he's gone. Father Baron, you see, the wrinkles in his face just getting, just just as he passes, the wrinkles in his face just getting that that bit thicker and deeper, and he's the dwarf has died of old age. Ah, uh, you see. The rest of you who are back here, you'll see Davin and Karina will, will be turned round now and they're crying, there's tears in all of their eyes. The king. Well, that's the king, the prince, the, the, the throne wardens, all of them have their heads hung and they're mm -hmm. all just looking solemn. The king uh, even. There's a tear happened? dripping from his eye. Father Baron, I think he's dead. Uh, who's Father Baron? I, I, I kind of sit up and look round. Like, this wasn't where we were. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the skeleton? <laughs> I 
What happened? Uh -huh. I haven't heard it. The crush just going to the room, that was brutal. Emma was too preoccupied with Father Bearer to, to oh, respond. Kiara. Kiara was straight over grabbing Stinky Nook, like picking him up like a baby. <laughs> being like, oh my god, you're back. You're back, you're back. He, 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 he gone. What happens? What, what, what? He's gave his you, life you, for you, your did life. You do you teleport us here? No, Stinky Nook, you died. You were gone. It killed you. But we've made it to rock home. And Father Barrett has given his life to bring you and back. Given his life for yours, we've thinking that you've died and you came back. You, you, we're heroes. You're the hero. We have to. <laughs> Not a hero. To, we have to help these people. I, 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 I kind of, I kind of. Wriggle out of Kiara's grasp and kind of <laughs> land on Good the luck. ground and. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Rush over to Darrow and, and 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 kind of pull my ring off and hand, hand it to Darrow and try try that. See if that will help. You notice Ulrich, <laughs> Ulrich, Bardrak, Eliana, even Davin, Davin and Karina are behind Darrow now, but they all the dwarfs. The king, the king, his son, his guards, they're all kneeling now. They all take one knee and just oh, yeah. and just hang their heads at the passing of Father Betherin. They all they all they all knew Father Betherin had he'd, he'd done this so many times in the last week that he had the one more in him. You saw it when you came in. This dwarf had aged fifty or sixty years in the month or two you've been away, Darrow. He's been doing this. He's the city's at war. Obviously, when a city is at war, the 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 most high level clerics and priests will be used to do these spells when they can, and it's taking its toll on him. And this is uh -huh. this was the last one he had in him. Father Baron is no more. Ah. Uh -huh. Well. I I think I, I I don't know what happened. I mean, I, I remember seeing Drow, but I I I I, I don't remember where I was. Um, um, the, I don't know. I don't know what to do, Dar Dar Darrow. <laughs> uh, Darrow, sort uh, of delays find. Well, can't well, ask well, people to help him lay Father Berin out. Won't, won't that ring help? I don't think... I think it is old age that killed him. <laughs> um, not, not wounds, and I think that ring... There's no dwarven magic cure for old age because only leech dumb cures old age, and dwarves are not into that. Eh? So yep. there's there's what no that? leech dumb turning into a leech. It's an like evil thing. It's an undead thing. Dwarves don't do that though. There's no coming back for Father Baron. Eh, uh, uh. Eliana, Eliana Irontoe, who's a high level priest in in the in the church here, will turn around and say, "Young gnome." Under Darkling, you're to save us, to save the dwarfs from the evil of the drow. You're the drow slayer to be. It was foretold. Barakthram told us. Father Beren has given his life to save this city, and you were the final piece, the final key in the lock to win this war. Well, I, I, I'll do my best. I hate drow, certainly. Um... Let me at them. Oh, you'll um, have your chance. Will they bless for weapons and shit before we go? Can we get extra points somewhere? Yeah, I mean, the bless spell, when used on a weapon, turns a weapon into a plus one weapon for only yeah, six for like six a, rounds like only. A special homebrew, barrack specific anointment <laughs> of a 
because we're on a bad exams mission. You know you're going to get something like that. You, I might not know that you asked for it. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> I thought that was a worthwhile this is idea. This is the Holy Church of Barracks Room. Makes sense to me. Daryl Daryl feels a wholeness in his heart when he's here. This is his whole purpose is to this God. And this mm -hmm. is his existence, mm -hmm. his being, and he feels a wholeness in his heart being here. But all of you, all of you feel even though you've never been here before, you all feel a strange sense of home here. Like I just Eleonora specifically feel does she feel like it's it, it, it does anything specific happen to her as in oh shit this is the same god but we're just different branches or does she now believe that that it's possible that it is the same god or does she still think that hers is the elven one or what how does she feel I'm not going to tell you how Eleonora feels I'll tell you how she looks and acts and you can ask her how she feels but she looks and acts in awe of the church and she looks she looks upon the statue of Barak Thram in awe and but you can see in her eyes without without any kind of skill check or anything you can see awe and puzzlement in her eyes like she's like 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 some sort of realization is something you're questioning but realization at the same time and she's she's lost in her own thoughts she's deep in thought She's looking around the place deep, deep, deep in thought. She's not spoke a word to anyone since she came here. She bowed politely to the King of the Dwarfs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Father Baron has passed. Devo looks at his mother, who he thinks may be the new high priest, and said, says, what did... Father Berin me when he said I should ask you for the truth. I will tell you, son. I'll tell you. And she'll go she'll go off in air and she'll say, Come. Davin you right, da Davin, you stay. Right. Davin, you stay with Father Berin. And she'll take you off in a side room over like here. Yeah. She'll talk to him private. <clears throat> Daryl, I've always wanted to tell you this, but I've never known how. But Baron, he wanted you to know. He, he wanted mm -hmm. you to know it was, it was his wish. I must, I must, must grant his wish. And she's got tears flowing down her eyes at this point. Daryl Davin is not your. Your real father. I'm sorry. I'm, no. so, I'm sorry. No, uh, that man that raised you is, is not your father. Your father died fifty years ago in the God's War. Davin was just uh -huh. your father's friend, a good friend, who married me and raised you as his own. Y your father never, never knew you. He died. He, he died when I was pregnant. I was pregnant in the God's War, and your father never met you, and Father Beren needed you to know. He was a soldier in the yeah. war. He was a good man. He was a good man. As good as Beren. As good as... As good as Davin, but... Davin's... Davin's... He's... He's raised you as his own. He's... He's sacrificed... His own... He, yeah. Dav, Davin's never had his own children. He just... He was satisfied to raise you, and... Father Baron just always wanted it to be a secret, and now he told me, he said that you must know, and you must know in your your father's real name. He'll give he gives you a name. He'll give you a name. Your father's real name, your real name, your real last name is lost in pages of notes. Barrack Copper Song. Your father's real name. Barak Copper Song. He was a soldier and a good man. And he died in the war. And his best friend, Davin, raised you like you were his own. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth of it, Darrow. Your your parentage is has been a lie all your life. And I'm sorry we had to keep it a secret from you, but uh -huh. it's just the way it is. Why did they have to keep it a secret? Father Baron always just said from, from day one.
from the moment Dara's father died. You're, you're, you're not even in this conversation. It's just the two of them. I know, but, sorry. But <laughs> from, 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 the, from, the mo from the moment your father died, um, Father Beren asked Davin to do this and to keep it a secret. And, mm -hmm. and the, 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 the people of Rockcomb who knew, they just they kept it from you too. And your, your uncles know, your cousins know, everyone knows but you. Ah. I'm sorry we lied to you. Well, that hurts. It's beauty, he thought, uh, too much has been happening. Sorry, I threw... he, may, he may not have been your father, but he was your dad. <laughs> It said, "Bah, bah." He loved, bah. He, 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 he loved you as well as any father ever could. You've, yeah. you've been blessed with a great father. Um, he's yeah. he dedicated his life to doing his best friend proud, and he's, he has done. Yeah. But yeah, Father Baron, when he knew you were coming, he said it was time to tell you. It was time, you know, you're um, you're. Not only a grown man now, Daru, you're you're a champ a real champion of Barak Ram. Your your father's your, your father's days are over. You're the high champion of Barak Ram now. I guess I guess I'm the high priestess of Barak Ram now too. And she she has a little moment of realisation as well and she's sad for a moment because Father Beren's passed, but I guess there's a moment yeah. she she'll she'll take take in for a moment. There's some there's some pride there. She she is now the high priestess of Barak Thram, and it's her duty to 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 spread Barak Thram's wishes and to to protect his church. And this is yeah. this, and this she's got no more secrets to tell you, so she'll start you know walking back out towards the the rest of the. The people congregated in the church, I guess you do too. Yes. Yes. And, uh, say, if you're the high priestess, perhaps you should speak to Eleanora about how her, her branch and our branch. It's a funny thing, the church, the, the yeah. elf. The elves who worship Barak Tramdaro. It's a strange thing indeed. Strange. The guardians of the sword, eh? Because she believes he was a woman. She, I, I, I understand she believes she was an elf too. Yeah. Stranger thing. Strange, strange stories, Daro. You see, you see the statue. You see what Barak Tram looked like. He was a dwarven war hero. Maybe yeah. Barak Thram comes to us all in our own form and they are just... This is what you would assume an elf who worships Barak Thram would think like, that they just see that Barak Thram as an elf. This is Kiara adding, yeah. Saying, saying out loud, because she's seen Eleonora and how she worships and she's seen how Dara worships and it's, she finds it funny that... They, it's it's the exact same, but it's for a different god. So this would be her chance to say, and perhaps Barak Fram will come to us all in 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 our own form. Eleanor stays quiet. Eleanor is, if asked, to approach, uh, Karina, she will, but she's not going to volunteer to. She's just staying very quiet, very humble, not say, not saying anything. The king. Wants your attention. Yeah, I give her a little look and see if she's like okay though. Is she all right? She looks. Hmm. Give me a wisdom roll. Let's have a roll for it. <laughs> like we're playing Call of Cthulhu, and this is your psychology roll. Roll for just roll under your wisdom on a d twenty. Your wisdom, okay. wisdom or under. Yeah, okay. She look that's a good role. She looks 
somewhat satisfied to be here. But... She looks confused. She looks like she's just wondering what's going on. But at the same time, like, she's... She's in, she's in the right place and in the wrong place at the same time. She looks conflicted, but she looks pleased with herself. Mm. She's she's looking at the she's looking at the king of of the dwarfs. And the kings kings want your attention. Um, mm -hmm. He will <coughs> battle. Please, yes. If you would allow your father and. Your mother and and Eliana to attend to to Father Beren. I must must have the ear of you and your companions. Yes. If you would honour me, I would appreciate it greatly. Yes, sir. So this is the son, the king. The two king's guards, the two throne wardens. So, Darrow, are you gonna like? Is everyone gonna stand in front of them? Is everyone gonna approach? Yeah. For what? Wait, for the, them to tell us what the crack is. The king wants an audience with Darrow and Co. Aye, obviously then. Which way is the king facing? He's facing towards you. So if you turn around like one eighty, you're facing the king. Right. Um, Charlemagne had came running over to st to see uh, Schninkenook. Oh, is he licking them? Yeah, like like nuzzling them. here because obviously oh. um, he's smelled that oh, he's right. been dead for days. Have you got the control of his token? I bet no. Yes, I have, With the magic, yeah, he's, the smells completely changed. So Charlemagne would be confused because that dead smell Wait. is. Gone completely magically he's erased. He's alive again mm -hmm, now. And he's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 so yeah, it smells. I, 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 I will kind of skirt Kiara and kind of go and, 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 and stand slightly behind Darrow. So, not over any course I'm of time, confused. but like in an instant, he's went from smelling horrible and rotten to smelling normal yeah. like Snakinook again. So, not even over time gradually, but just in an instant. So, that would confuse the bear. He didn't smell rotten because he was wrapped in that cloth. It, no, he wasn't getting any more rotten. It was burnt and pusty. Yeah. So, yeah, the bear would have been able to tell that he was not alive. He would have smelt more. burnt. Yeah. He would have smelt singed hair, singed skin. That's a strong smell. Yes. That would have been lingering. Yeah. He's only been dead two days or something. That would linger. He's been carrying his lifeless body as he's well. Been not, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's been strapped to Charlemagne's back. Actually, he's been carry. He's been carrying Snankinuk while he's been dead. So he's only been he's dead a couple of days. It. He's not been decomposing, yeah. but he does smell of burnt. Yeah, smells of well done pork burger. <laughs> yep, that smell has gone completely now. Snake Eunuch is completely hale and healthy. Why? And viewers, we're ignoring the, the Snake Eunuch's 30% magic resistance because one, he was dead, it doesn't count, and two, plot armor. Plot armor. <laughs> uh. Yes, I'm just wondering, with all of his clothing and whatever knitting together, Magical. have his uh, have his cigars returned? So, <laughs> items, no. Things he was wearing, yes. Were you wearing a backpack? I remember you had one that blew up. Did you get another one? So your backpack yes. you were wearing, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Let's let no. Let's let's roll. One second, uh, hang on a second. Let me just check and see where they were, because they may have been in the pack that Charlemagne was carrying. Yeah, because I couldn't yeah. carry that much. I might give you a roll for your possessions. Yeah. Uh, see if right, you've been blessed fine. by Barak Fram even more. I'll give you your resurrection sur survival chance again. The eight. Okay. <laughs> Leather armor. Right. I'll give you the eighty-eight percent on all of them. You can roll okay, some dice. Then. Let's go. Leather armor. There we go. So that's okay. Uh, quiver number one. Quiver number two. Nope. Ah, quiver number two's gone. So I've only got one one quiver. Got an eight percent. I'm being kind to you here. You can. In that case, you're done. Uh, 
you done rules before. You have done for what for what got destroyed. Actually, you, you did rules for what got destroyed, but these are things that are magically coming back with his clothes coming back. So let's yeah, let's give them a chance. Okay. Yeah. Um... You're in the house of Barak Thram. He's blessed you. Let's give them a chance. Yeah. Yeah. So it's silver arrows. Yeah. Yep, we're okay. The backpack itself. Yes. Um, <clears throat> um, my little belt pouch. That's okay. So does that mean the things in the backpack Go and ahead. in the belt pouch are okay or not? Uh, yeah, let's say so. Okay. So in that case, my thieves picks are okay. Uh, on my belt, flask of oil. No, that's okay. Uh, the bullseye lantern on the other side. That's okay. Dave, did yep. all these things fail against the fire munition? Are these the ones that got destroyed, are they? Uh, no, these are the ones that survived. Oh, these are the ones that survived. No, everything that survived comes back, man. Everything that survived oh, right. comes okay, back. Fine. Yeah. Okay. The thing, let's just freeze. The things that survived came back. The things that got burnt are gone. So your cigars are gone. But remember, someone's got some, I think. Someone has some hidden away. Maybe. 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 There's, there, there's mushroom wine that was on the bear. <laughs> I think you there's find somebody there. might have some yeah, mushroom like cigars. Mushroom cigars passed away somewhere, like somebody with chicken stole some. Somebody might have stole and some. A, f them a few there. times back. At the... well, um, I don't have time to worry about that now. I've been sent back by Gull to go and kill Drow. Exactly. So where are they? You've been, you've been bargained back from by Barakthram from Garl. Yeah. Barakthram has done a deal with Garl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Gull, Garl's Gull not sent you back. Barakthram has asked for you from has asked from for you back from Garl. He's done a deal with Garl. Garl has said yes. Barak Travis yes, now will Garl so. some favour. So Garl obviously feels I should be back here fighting Drow. So in that case, that is my purpose. You're back. You're back from Garl's heavenly embrace with no memory of it. It's gone. It's gone. It's completely wiped. You're back I, in the I, world I of the. I know. I remembered it for an instant, but then it was overwhelmed by Drow. You remembered it for a few seconds, and then your vision was just overwhelmed with it, with warring Drow, with 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 Drow. Swinging swords in your face and blood splattering everywhere and screams and the, the sights of war and it just woke just brought you and then you're in this church and Dara was there and Kiara's there and Andy Makara's there and Eleonora and the bear and the two yeah, dwarfs yeah, yeah. Uh, and what looks sure like what a king of a dwarfs <laughs> yes I know well I'm 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 standing behind Bar Dara at the moment um, so uh, Barak Thunder Mace is going to come and just hear what the king has to say as well Bardrak Thunder Mace sorry Davin and Eliana are attended Father Beren as is Karina they'll be like dressing them putting things over them getting ready to do their religious ceremony for when you bury a high priest that'll be a big ceremony there'll be a lot of preparation to go into that I don't know what that's good, how that's been in the time of war is going to affect that it's going to be interesting but in the middle of a war Mm -hmm, in the middle of a war. The king will address you. Fargrim and Olgrim. Let's get them let's get everybody in the king's semi circle of talking. So the king Kendrick Drake's been handsome dwarf. Old but handsome. Obviously been very handsome all his life. Um muscular, strong. Has has the scars of a warrior, but they're old. He's lived. He's lived a, a, a cushy life for many years as as a king, as a man with more money than he can spend and everything he wants. But he looks stressed and worried. You can see that his city's at war. And he, and he addresses you, Daro, and friends, mm -hmm. and the Makar, Kiara, Eleonora, Sninkinuk, Fargrim, Ogrim. Your coming's been foretold to me by. The late Father Baron. He knew all your names. Barakam truly speaks to him. I need your help. As you can see, the city's at war. The 
the drow have got involved. The Durgar of of char character, I think it's called, have ha calendar have Karanderwaka, I think it's called, have um have allied with, with the drow of we don't know where and and they're 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 attacking the city. Attacks have become more and more frequent until recently. They've they the axe of Barakthrum is gone and the the attacks have, have died down a little bit, but we think they're we think they're just recouping for war one either one 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 big attack or or something else, Darrow. There are mm -hmm. other there are the two other artifacts of Barakthrum and we think perhaps they seek to bring them together. We need you to get the axe back in safe hands. We think He's in a place called, and I'm going to switch maps for a second. I'm not going to switch you. We think the Drow and the Durgar are coordinate their coordinating their attacks from Karan Terwaka, which is blue water. Which is, in fact, I will switch you. I'm not going to switch you to the map because it'll just take ages to load up. But I've got the underground map up, and it's to the southeast of you underground and it's an old and you'll have heard of it Dar Daro Karen Terwaka was a, a Durgar settlement that used to be really close to Rockcomb. It was destroyed 20 plus mm -hmm. years ago in the war um, the dwarves have been winning the war against the the drow for the last 28 years and pushing them back but they reckon against now the yeah, against, the, against the Durgar sorry the drow have just got involved. I am going to move you to the other map Oh god, not this one. No, it's not that one. It's not the one oh, with loads of stuff on it. <laughs> Don't worry, it's the it underground like, map. It was, the it underground map. It was all fuzzy. I was like, please no. I'll wait, I'll wait till you all get to to see it. But they're all, they're apparently, they're stationed, they're building an outpost. There's a military outpost where they're coordinating attacks at Karen Terwaka. And they're allying with many different races of the Underdark and beasts and monsters. And we think that he is there, this slayer, this Durgar, this giant Durgar that, that carries the axe of Barakthrum. And we think that they're, they're back there either coordinating their next attack or perhaps moving to the other artifacts of Barakthrum, which means Silverhall. But we don't think they have the strength and numbers to attack Silverhall. They seek to bring the three artifacts of Barakthram together, Darrow. I was just about to ask, no. what are the three artifacts? There's the axe. the axe. The axe. And the axe. The sword. There's the axe. I don't know. There's the axe, and he looks up at the missing axe. The sword, and he looks over at Eleonora. That the elves of uh, the little island were charged with the care of. And the hammer. Barakthram was a, a hero of the the, go, the God's War, an El, a dwarven hero in the God's War, and his three weapons were a, a magic axe, a magic great axe, a magic war hammer, and a magic sword. And these three weapons were instrumental in the winning of the God's War. And although Barakthram died, uh, he was... He was made a god he he ascended to, to to demigodhood and it's it's believed that through foul magic the drow and the durgar have found some way that to bring the three if they bring the three weapons together it's always been said that it's something to do with the three weapons is how he ascended to godhood and it's always been the legend is that these three weapons, when brought together in the right hands, can create a god of from anyone. But it's a legend. Mm -hmm. But he seeks the other the other artifacts. The other artifacts have been split up for this reason, to keep them away out of unsafe hands and to keep them And the sword was the one that we Eleonora seen getting dug up. So the sword yeah, so the sword was in the hands of that evil guy that attacked the church on the little island, but you've had it been reported to you that it's now safe at Silver Hall. Now he'll tell you that the hammer, the hammer's a different story. 
Who's keeping it safe? Sorry. The hammer is in the hands of the Frost Giant King. The King of the Frost Giants in the Frozen North was sold the hammer in a peace deal. It's one of the only ways the war could be won. He was sold the hammer in a peace deal and it's frozen away in ice under 200 feet of ice in a, in a castle somewhere in the frozen north of Olathe. And it has been for 50 years. But it's feared that if the sword and the axe and the hammer were brought together in the wrong hands, they could create a god again through the right dark magic. And when mixed with dark magic and dark elves and dark dwarves, it can only create dark gods. So Barathram has told of the possibility of someone joining him in demigodhood through his weapons. It, he's, he's told Father Beren that this is a realistic thing, this is a realistic possibility, and that the weapons must be either kept in safe hands or kept apart, or, or even destroyed, so that they can't, the drow and the durger can't create a god like Barakthram was created. Barakthram is a good and just god. If these Durgar and these Drow can do the same thing and create a god in that way, it's not going to be a good thing. The God's War will be upon us again. Uh, the land will be ripe with orcs and ogres and trolls. The humans and the elves won't be safe. The dwarves won't be safe. The gnomes won't be safe. It'll be like the first time. But this time, there's an extra god on their side. And we can't let that happen. Darrow and your friends, Sninkinook, Kiara, and the Makar. You have to bring back the axe to Rockholm. You have to get that axe back to Rockholm. You have to seek this slayer. Please, I beg of you. You have to seek the slayer and bring me back that axe. For the sake of Rockholm, for the sake of the Holy Alliance, of all that is good, the dwarfs, the elves, the humans. For the sake of the world you've got to, you've got to bring it back you must i beg you <laughs> i come to you not today as your king i'm not your king and he looks at kiara and he looks at snake Kinook, and he looks at andy Makar. i'm not your king i can't command you i don't command you i beg of you and he looks at you individually he looks away from battle for a second he looks at the three of you i i i, I beg your help Darrow needs Follow you I am following the boss, I say, holding up uh, my, my, my hand and kind of you know, holding on to Darrow's arms. Um, I don't understand it, but his god brought me back from Garl's paradise, and so I'm, I'm working for him. So if he's doing it, I'm doing it. Mm. Father Bell. No, I'm, here to, I'm here to protect Eleonora. Uh, you know, I, I imagine that Eleonora will want to... Uh, Follow uh, Barakram's, uh, yeah, um, quest. Eleonora looks shy, and Eleanor Eleanor stays quiet at this point. Eleanor's got a court date in thirty days in the other direction. Well, possibly um, the king can get her an extension. A well, one king can write to another king. That's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Because it looks like yes, it's a, it's about a day's travel to uh, where it where it might be to where it might be. It's about a day's travel, yeah. But it's under dark. It could be riddled with um, all sorts of things that could hold yeah. you up. There might be guard posts and other such things along the way. You know, they, they yeah. probably wouldn't leave it undefended, would they? Well, I think probably the if the if the, the king of the dwarves could uh, write to the to the king in Silverhall, yeah, a, a sensible approach. The problem is the just gold, in case we don't. The problem uh, is the gold road. If you back look, in time, if you look further up the map, you'll see the gold road where it intersects with one of the known roads of the Underdark. I don't know if you actually see that. I don't know if I've got that on your layer, but somewhere around here, yeah, there is. There's a bit where the Underdark meets the Gold Road. This so, is a line on your drawing. So between there and there is full of Drow and Durgar and their monstrous allies. 
So right now, her direct route back to Silver, or sorry, not just Eleanor's direct route back to Silver Hall, but anyone's direct back route back to Silver Hall is blocked by a war. Uh, so no, even the so even begin. the king getting a letter to the other king, yeah, he's the king, and he can write a letter, and he can get a king to do things. But can you get that letter there? Is the thing. Well, we now know <laughs> the route back to the surface, don't we? Mm -hmm. You know the route back to, to the surface. Yeah, to uh, Dragon Dragon's Watch Castle. castle. Yep, Dragon's to Dragon's Watch, Watch castle. castle ruins with enough men to dig or enough magic to move the dirt to get yourselves back out where you came in. Yeah. But there was a party of dwarves already headed that way. Already headed that way. Another one was one of your cousins, Darrow, if I believe correctly, if I remember yeah. correctly. Another one of your cousins and his friend Swisher Seven, who are a party of adventurers, much like yourselves, a famous party of adventurers from Rockcomb. They were seen moving swiftly direction, swiftly in the other direction with a large chest. Yes. The king will plead with you, my city's at war. Uh, all, everything's closed. People are locked in their houses. No one's, no one's safe. We can't. We can barely get food in and out. We need, uh, we need to win this war. The drow, the drow, and the dorg are together. they we're on the back foot. We're losing the war, Darrow. That that axe, that that's the key. Yeah. You're you're the key. We need you. I and think we might have Yes, I think we must go that way. And your friends? And he looks at you all again. Of course. If the, uh, if the security of elven kind is at, uh, at stake as well, then uh, it's my duty to uh, to assist. And my car, my friend. Count on us, mm, King. We'll, 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 we'll be there. Don't worry. The King will say, Andy Macar, my friend. I can't speak for for elves and for elven kind. I can speak for dwarves and dwarven kind, but when it comes down to it, in this in this day and age for the last fifty years we we are allies, we are friends and it's it's the humans, the elves and the dwarves staying together that that, that kept us alive on this planet fifty years ago and 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 will do so in the future. And this dwarf and he'll put his hand on Darrow's shoulder, this dwarf needs these elves and he looks around you. If the God's War comes again, no one will be safe. If the God's War yeah. comes again, no one is safe. We think we've got a war on our hands here, and un with the Underdark and with the Drow and the Durga, when the God's War comes, it's it's everything. There's still, I, still um, people remember the God's War. We do not want another one. Kiara is used to being treated uh, to Elven by humans and considered too human to be elven by proper elves so she doesn't care um about it being an elven or a dwarven uh god barrack fram has served her so she will help that or serve barrack fram fargrim and ogrim just look there already said they're gonna support the king They'll go along and uh, keep Darrow alive while he does it. They'll do anything. Aye, the, brother. Yeah, they'll do anything the king asks. I'll put you back on the other map. I wanted to show you where this guy is partly located. You used to sneak into a military outpost, though. This is a military outpost full of Durger, Drow, and their monstrous allies. And you used to, by any means necessary, get that axe back. Yeah. We had access to a knowledge of some new spells. We might be able to make ourselves invisible, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. If there is someone that could teach us these things. I work way through easy. Oh shit, hold on. I think I'm going to have to get a charger. Yes, I do. I'll be back. You know, the King of City, Anna Macar, my friend, this is a dwarven city. The magic shops here are, are few and far between, and, and all they're all closed right now. There's. But, I mean. I have personal treasure. <laughs> I have magic scrolls that, that, have, that will never be used. They're treasures. Perhaps for such a holy quest, I could 
give some to some... I don't need them. And he'll give a look to his son. And he'll give a look to his guards as well. Arrange... Arrange for... Someone to bring... My personal collection of... Wizardly scrolls. For... Mr. Rand McCarr and Miss Chiara to peruse Ooh. at their leisure. God, Chiara oh, feels so honoured. Uh, thank you, King. Wow, thank you so much. And the other thing, I have an axe to return. You have an axe to return. There's the next thing, right? So I've got a note of a few things here. That's another one that I didn't have written down. So, the rules of the champion kit is they give you your first plus one. You start with a plus one weapon. It's like a pretty badass thing for a level one character to have. But as soon as you find a better one, you have to bring it back to this church, to the original place where you brought it. So you've got your original plus one holy axe, the one that got smashed to bits in F session one. Yeah. You're going to return that now, not to Father Baron. You're going to return that to your mother? I'm going to return that to my mother, and I have a suspicion of what might happen to it. She takes it, and she walks up to the prince, and she will kneel, not kneel, but go down on one knee and hold the, the axe out to the prince and say, Sire, your highness, and he'll say, no more of that. I am a humble champion of Barakram now. And he's got his big beaming smile on his face. Daro, will you take me as your, as your initiate, as your, as your trainee? Yes. Will you teach me to be a true champion of Barakram? Yes. Yes, but be aware of the dangers. You've been, of the... you've been charged with a level one squire. <laughs> you've been charged with a level one <laughs> champion to take on. So he's level one slash one fighter priest. Zero XP. He's your new party NPC. Try and keep him alive, guys. Yes. <laughs> he's yes. a prince. Why is he so squishy? Because <laughs> it'll be fun for you to try and keep a level one prince alive. I thought it would be fun. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you were thinking. Yeah, you can have a new NPC, but he's level one slash one, and he's the king's <laughs> son. <laughs> yes. It's, we have to hope there are no farm to save the party. Uh, Fargrim and Olgrim, step forward, and we will follow you, Brother Darrow. Wherever you, wherever, wherever, wherever you, you take us. For Barakthram, for dwarfs, for elves, for humans, and he looks around and he's like, Bargam and Ogrim are, they're happy, they are, they've just seen Snakinook brought back to life, they've just seen another dwarf brought back to life, they've witnessed this old man die of old age after casting a spell, which is pretty tragic, but the king, the king has addressed them personally, asked them to be part of this quest with you. They're very happy. Eleonora is shy. Stunned. She seems a bit stunned. Yeah, I was going to try and get a chance to speak to Eleonora a little bit when we're together later on. Like, quite, like a saying. quiet moment. Yeah. Just ask her about how she felt. Like, like the things that you said I was going to have to ask her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is anybody low on hit points? Because there's quite a few priests in the room. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not sure where I am, how I am for spells. Oh, here's uh, the thing. How are you for spells? You may have used quite a lot. I remember Kiara blasting off some lightning bolts and you can't have much. And we had the... Shall we... Because I also assume we've been up for a while given we're because we've fought the Death Knight, we've been in this other combat, there's then been this. Yeah, it's been a few hours. You're a few hours into the day anyway. You're going to attempt to rest. You've been travelling. You've been travelling, haven't we? Yeah, and, and you've with, 
You've been helping Kari with a those... dead dwarf. You've been... With those spells and the car wants to look at etc. I sus suspect we're going to be arresting dead. Because I'm showing yeah. a few hit points down. I think you've all taken like a hit or two or like the, you seem to all be like a I'm couple most, you're full. Everyone's either full or only a couple down. I think you all did fairly well in the in that fight and with the. the so border. I cast. <laughs> sorry, I cast. Did I cast lightning bolt twice? Think so. And I cast web as well, didn't I? Think so. Darrow seems to have a couple of first, a couple of second, a couple of third left. Uh, I haven't looked at Eleanor, but I'm... Was, was Trevor running Eleanor in the last session, or was I still doing both clerics? I don't know. I don't remember. I think, uh, yeah, weren't you, were you doing Eleanor? I mean, uh, I've got still my second and third level spells. I've only used my first level spells. So, while we're talking, one of the, one of the Throne Wardens gets, will come back with a big with a big case full of scrolls. Yes, Eleanor is showing as having a couple of first and a second left. The king. I think so, Kiara and I will probably want to learn some spells, something we can you know we can share them. If one of us learns tries to learn it then the other can The King will open up a book as well. The king opened up a book, we... right? Sorry, go ahead, Peter. I think we're probably going to be preparing this day and then heading out tomorrow. So the king will pull out of this chest a huge book, that thick, leather tome, leather bound, pages that size, and he'll flip it open. And you see that each page... There's a magical scroll, and there must be a hundred pages in this book. And the king looks at you, and the Makar looks at you, Kiara, and says, I've no need for them. Take what you want. Ooh. The king lays down this huge book of magical scrolls, lays it out in front of the two of you, the elf and the half-elf, and says, take what you want. I have no use for it. And to make it quick and easy, what he's got and what he hasn't got, we're going to go... Level 1 has a 90% chance, level 2 has an 80% chance, all the way down to level 9 has a 10% chance that he's got it. Tell me what spell you would like, and then roll a dice to see if it's there. That's how we're doing it. Oh, well, that's no good for me, because I don't know what spells there are already. That's no use for oh, the guys, Oh, the guys know yeah. what spells are good and what would be good well, for if you. you. If you have a look on, on, if you have a look on um, Purple Worm, Luna... Yeah, just look um, at it. It's got the lists. It's got the lists of the wizard spells by level. Yeah, I know. Hold on, yeah. because I'm I'm struggling with uh, the screen last night. Oh, no. I've I've oh, got it. Up. Yeah. I'll uh, run through no, some. Um, yeah, is it in the second? So it's the second second edition list, I assume. Yep. Um, just the standard one. Wizard spells by level or whatever. Yeah. If, yeah, but I just um, think it's a bad thing, to, like a bad choice to do just now because this means that it'll take a while and I have to read through a lot because I don't know what the, the things are already. I don't mind if it takes a wee while. All this, here we go. Oh, I do. <laughs> it's not going to take that long, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Well, start at the top and work down. screen where I can read it more easily. Oh, oh that's big. Mm -hmm. oh, what have I got? I've got quite a few first level ones. Yeah, you go, I, I was going to say, you go first then, Trevor, and choose or go through things that you think you'd want. Then that'll give me an idea as well. I thought 
invisibility is going to be a useful one. Well, yeah, someone said that earlier. Yeah, so shall I roll for invisibility? Was it level 3? Level 2? Uh, it's level 2. So it's got an 80% chance. Right, sorry, it's wizard spells, isn't it? Yep, so roll an 80%. Trevor, there you yep, go, mate. Aye, so he's, he's got one of them. Uh... If you so want, a, if you want, us, if you want a second scroll the same, there's the, the half the chance, right? So if you had an eighty percent chance that he had a first one, there's a forty percent chance he has a second mm. one. Well, if I try learning that one, then it, and then if I fail, Kiara's going to have to look for a, <laughs> a second one. Right, right then, Lun Luna. So I got sixty-five percent chance seven times. You roll under forty percent, and he's got a second scroll the same. Yeah. Well, but then she, um, Kiara can copy it off of um, off of my book if I manage to. If you manage to learn it, but inscribe it. Roll another percentile, and if you roll forty or under, then he's got a second copy anyway. At a low level, nope. I'm happy with that. No, he hasn't. No. Okay. <laughs> so he's got uh, the one. Okay. Copy. Well. Well, shall I try learning it? We we worked out we've both got the same chance of learning them. So this is this is my chance of learning. You can oh, do no, totally incomprehensible. You can do third level spells. I can. Kiara, Kiara can. Can Ander now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, but, right. So, do you want us to go through and choose from each level a spell that we want to learn, uh, or have a percentage learning, or are you want us to find? Pick a spell pick each. A so we're not doing it all day. Pick a spell from each level each. So pick a first level spell you fancy. Pick a second level spell you fancy. No, a third I'll level. To see if he's got burning hands or for first level. Okay, you've got a ninety percent chance. To his first level. Stroll a D one hundred. Mm-hmm. Ninety or under. Yeah, he's got it. Right, would I have to uh, well, are you gonna try and are you gonna take the scroll or are you gonna try and just learn the scroll and copy it into your magic book? Well, we're allowed to take them. I'll just You're take allowed them. to just take them, so you can just add it to under scrolls, burning hands. Mm. And then if we if we learn it, we can just cast it whenever we want to. He's letting you that just was, take these uh, if you want. Well, what's what's the best way to do it? To copy it into your magic book and then try to learn it. No, the copying is part of the learning process. Right, if yeah. you feel it doesn't copy. Yeah. Um, but it still destroys it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to just take them for now and we can do the copying part later yeah. then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll that. We, we won't have time to do that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not resting yet anyway. So that it's going to happen when you rest the, the actual learning of spells. So don't worry about the learning of... Just, if you did a, if you failed the learning roll before, Trevor, forget about that. We'll do the, the learning after. This is just... Seeing what he's got for now, and you can take them. So, well, is, why not just roll kind of 20 D100s and we just go down the spell list and say the ones he hasn't got? No, if you want, go and then roll 20 D100s uh, if that's going to be quicker. This is the ones he doesn't have. No, because uh, that no, because that's not great. Because you want them to be rarer by level, so the percentage chance kind of works. They yes, end, I know. Get the percentage chance. Well, the spell list for first level is. Uh, hang on a second. There's forty-five of them. Uh, oh, and now. If you're going by the player's handbook. Forty-five at first level. Yeah. So if you just roll yeah. percentile 45 D100 and see which ones aren't there. Or, or do it in batches of 10. Nah. Wait, I mean, it, are, are you going to give us all the ones that he's got or just give us 10 of each level? No, I'm going to say just pick one of each level each and we'll yeah. see if he's got okay. it. Yeah. For, okay. for ease right, of time. Right. For ease of so time. That's burning, and... it, that's burning hands we've got. Was that level okay. one? That's a level one spell, level right? Level one. Okay. So, level two, I would like to see if he has... Well, hang on. Uh, Luna, why don't you pick your level one spell? I did. That so was... I did. She picked Burning Hands. Okay. okay. So, what do you want for level two? 
ESP. Ooh. Not really that useful, to be honest. Is it not? Um, well, it, not I don't really. know, like. I've known it to be useful. Maybe not, yeah, maybe not for you guys. Especially if you're, well, especially that, if you're questioning someone, it's useful to be able to yeah. hear what they're trying not to tell you. I like it. I bet she could do some good things with it. Roll for it. Let's see if she's if he's got it in the book. It's a level two, eighty percent chance. But if we're up against a drow, wouldn't detect invisibility be better? Yeah, but I'm not thinking about battle. Okay, fine. Oh, go on. Try for ESP. There you go. Sixty-four again. He's got yeah. it. He's got that. I've got to let Trevor pick one for each level as well. Yeah. Here, I might. Can you let? Trevor can pick for a little minute. I'm going to have to take a little break for a second. I'll be back soon. Okay. Okay. So which um, one are you picking for first level, Trevor? You can go through all levels, Trevor, right up to nine and yeah. get a chance that he's got it. Well, I, I've already, I already tried for a second level one, didn't I? Uh, which they one? They did have it. Uh, that which was one? Invisibility. Mm -hmm. And they did have one copy of Invisibility. So we've got Invisibility. Okay. Fine. Um, so what do you want at first level? Uh, I'm not sure how detect undead works. I don't know whether that'd be useful to us. Uh, sure, it's some of these. Just um, finished. Just finished the undead chapter. <laughs> it's, the yes. dry, it's the drow chapter next. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Have you got shield? I don't know. Let's oh, shield would be a good one for you, a frontline fighter mage. Well, shield protects uh, you from magic missiles, doesn't it? I haven't got shield. Mm. Uh, okay. Shield you can cast shield, on then. other people as well, eh? No, yeah, be I'm trying to hurt you all week. Right, uh, right I'll, I'll roll for, sh I'll roll shield. for shield. Yes. Yes. And shield. Yes, so that's, your, a that's your level one yes, and level two. I'm keeping that. Right, sir. Right. So, third level, what do you want for third level? Um, fireball, I suppose. Eee. <laughs> oh, it's come on. 70% right. chance. This is a king's riches. He's obviously got spells upon spells. And he's a dwarf. Nobody, nobody, nobody casts spells in dwarf society. <laughs> I'm no good at rolling Ooh. these. <laughs> he's not got fireball. Okay. You've already got lightning bolts. Fancy a level four spell? You can't well, learn it yet, well, but might as well take it with us. Yeah, it's what we're going to want. Well, um, ice don't, storm. Don't get, do you, do you not get a, another third level choice? No, I'm giving them you one are, choice each. Yes, uh, but, they go, but they're going through the yeah. book choosing one and he's had a page so he can't see invisibility uh, he can't I will. see fireball do you know what just because fireball wasn't there yet have a have a look for another third level spell it's fine because the other player oh, the think... other players are away just now anyway it doesn't matter if we linger on level three let you have another chance uh let me slow think. per chance sorry slow per chance uh, invisibility slow. invisibility 10 foot radius yeah. or oh. mm. Uh, water yes. breathing because we're bound to need it eventually. <laughs> mm. uh, well, we could go for the invisibility 10 foot radius. So that makes yeah, you and allies it. in a 10 foot radius invisible, doesn't it? Yeah, that's this because we, we might have to be stealthy, so that would probably be a good one. Let's try, okay, yeah. see whether he's got whether he's got that. Yeah, he's got that one. Hey, nice, okay. Combine that with silence 15 foot radius. And the other and one was going to be. Hands. The other one was going to be ice storm, wasn't it? At 60 percent chance. Or, or stone skin. Oh, stone skin. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, the fighters would like that. Okay, we'll go for stone skin. Roll for it. Roll for as many as you want until she gets back, <laughs> and oh, then yes, she can roll hers. There you go. It's got stone skin. Have so we got stone skin? Fifth level. Fifth level. You won't use that for a while. Oh. Now, oh, you can still oh, cast Diara's a scroll that's Diara. higher level, though, can't you? Diara's going to want animal growth, I think. <laughs> Hold monster, or pass wall, yeah. or cone of cold. 
Corner Cold's a very powerful offensive spell. Or one of the wall spells. Yes. Corner Cold's a very powerful effect. Because doesn't it slow your opponents as well as hurting them? Does it? I think so. Corner Cold's, no? Because one of them creates... Uh, well, no, it's ice. Isn't it Ice Storm that creates a slippery surface? Yeah, yeah it's Ice Storm. Ah, yeah, it's Ice Storm. Okay. Cloud kill. <laughs> Cloud kill. Is that level five? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a deadly spell. Now, am I right in thinking? I've not looked in the rule book. Am I right in thinking that you can cast a scroll that's higher level than you can cast, but you can't learn it? Yes. So you could cast uh, Cloud, a, Cloud uh, Kill if you yeah. had. Yeah. They used to. In one e, there was a chance of failure. I don't know whether that's continued. To but you can cast mm -hmm. higher than if you have the uh, scroll. You just burn the scroll. You can't learn it, but you burn the scroll. But you could potentially cast a level five scroll. Well, what do you reckon? Should we go for cloud kill? Uh, depends which way the the drafts are blowing. Uh, Still very well, windy it, in the underdark, is it? It moves away from the caster, doesn't it? Doesn't it move away from the caster? Unless there's a strong I think, breeze. I think it moves away from the caster. So, underground, you wouldn't do well. I, suppose, I mean, there could be drafts underground, but that might dissipate it. But right, go on, we'll go cloud for cloud kill. Yes, that's a cloud kill. He's got that. That was under fifty. Yeah. Six Nine. level. Yeah. Uh, chain lightning. Oh yes. Oh, <laughs> global <laughs> invulnerability. Ooh, both very powerful. Oh, spells. chain lightning is fun. I like chain lightning. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go for chain okay. lightning. What you missed was Kiara. He didn't have fireball. They failed the, the rule for that. He doesn't have fireball in his catalog. And he doesn't have chain lightning. Picking up some handy spells though. So another one to try could be disintegrate. For chance, what level is that? Yeah, six. Six. Disintegr so you want to try disintegrate? Forty percent chance he's got it. Is that? <coughs> yeah, got that one. Ooh. That's a permanent passport. <laughs> permanent level. Delayed blast fireball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thirty percent chance he's got it. Oh, go on then. Did they blast fireball? No. <laughs> uh, are, you gonna, are you going for wish at level nine? Are you? Prismatic <laughs> spray. Wish, for chance? Which one? Prismatic spray. spray. What level's that? Seventh. Seventh. Yeah. Go for it. 30% um, we'll chance. That. We'll try that one. No. Yep. Teleport without error. Ooh. What level's that? Seven. seven. We're, we're trying. Ahead. This is all seven. Right. Go for it. 30% uh, no, chance. Yeah, we've got that no. One. Force cage. Uh, yeah, force cage. Go for it. Force cage. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Find that one somewhere in there after a lot of hunting. This is quite a haul of scrolls you're getting. I do give XP Eight. for treasure gained. You'll get XP for this. Eighth oh, right, let's try some more. <laughs> uh, eighth level prismatic wall. 20% oh, yeah. chance. Oh. Incendiary. Incendiary cloud. That's just like a yeah. an explosion, basically, isn't it? When should we try then? Prismatic wall is a very nasty one. Uh, yeah. okay, we'll try that one. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, you got that. That's a level eight scroll. So ninth level, are you going to try the obvious one? Are you going for wish at ninth level? <laughs> Come on then, let's try. Right, who's rolling this? Oh. Nah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, 
they will be used. What else is there? At, <laughs> what, what else is there at ninth level? Meteor swarm. Is that a ninth level? Yep. Yeah. Right, Kiara, roll for it this time. You've got ten percent chance. A. Roll for meteor swarm. Ten percent chance. See whether we can find it. In See if you can get a level nine scroll. No. Uh, Anything no. else at level nine? Well, I'll give you a few rolls. Like this is a king. Right? Prismatic sphere, per chance. Go for it. Roll for it. This is a king's private collection. I'll let you have these rolls, like. Kiara, look through all the spells, and if there's anything you fancy they've not rolled for, you can roll for it. I'm at my fucking computer screen. Nice, nice, nice. Anything that strikes your fancy. Level three, I'd like to roll for invisibility with a ten foot radius. Okay, you've got seven. Uh, Trevor's already got that. Trevor yeah, already got sure. that. So yeah. you've got thirty five percent. So you've got thirty five percent oh. chance that there's a second one, though. Nah, I don't want the same one. There's no point in us getting the same okay. one because okay. we can learn them from each other. Uh, in which case, I was looking at it and I want it for myself. Um, could I please see if he has wrath form? Yeah, what level is Wraith it? Form. Wraith form, yeah. Third. Third level, so it's 70% yeah. chance. I'm letting you roll for anything here. Yeah, he's got it. What about hold person? They're always right. finished. So you've already it's got too late, and right? the clerics get that. Yes, yeah, there's no point in us doubling up on that. Yeah, clerics get hold person. Shall we, shall we finish the ninth options? <laughs> <You're gone. laughs> what else is there in nine? Gate. Gate? Is Why that just a portal thing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Call well, your god. Well, it's Peter that wants it, so roll for it, 10%, Peter. Well, I'm not one of the magic users. Doesn't or matter, you're still... Power kill. <laughs> power word kill. Which I suspect isn't much use, because things are going to have saving throws, but... I don't think they get a saving throw, but there's a hit point limit. Uh, well, go on, let's go for Power Word Kill. No. Yeah. Prismatic Sphere? Good. Didn't you already roll for that? No, he never got round to it because uh, Luna came back. Go for it. You want me to do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what level's Fireball? <laughs> no, Fireball's third not. level. Trevor failed yeah, on Fireball, right? But Trevor yeah, failed. But, but, but we've done all the third. But exactly. Trevor failed the roll, so I want to give. Luna, a second roll at 35% chance to see I if... she got Wraith form. She did, she did, she did, but I'm letting her roll more. I'm letting guys roll a few. So, yeah. to so see what? to see a second chance at Fireball. If Andy McCarr missed one, there's one hiding at the back turn the other way around. But at half, half 70%, so 35% chance that there is a Fireball hiding in the back and Andy McCarr never seen it. No. No fireball for you today. I'll give you a second chance and still no uh, fireball. Uh, on, the, no. on the ninth stop, have you done time stop? Did we do that? Nope. No, not yet. Okay. Kiara going to roll for that one. Yeah. What do you want to roll for? Another I've not had any success. Well, this is why I'd asked if everybody else would go for I've not had any success. Another percentile, just and it's a ninth level spell, so you want 10% or under. Oh, close. Ooh, close. Right. We're yeah. running out of the useful spells. Yeah, let's see that that's enough time spent perusing the king's personal magic spell collection. Okay? So we don't want to dwell on it for too long. Doesn't Kiara get to look for the fourth and fifth level? Because she well, can use them. Yeah, if, uh, if, no, if, if, uh, if you're keen uh, to. I'll, just, I'll, roll, I'll roll offline for other stuff if we're allowed to or not. No, nah, no, nah, you can. You can. But no, nah, if you want to do, if you've got ones that you are that you've, that you've you want to roll for, roll for them. It's, it's okay. It's fine. Nah, go for it. Roll for, for something sure. for level four or level five. Oh, I've, I've just closed all my stuff, fine. Because Trevor got stone skin at first attempt, didn't he? Yeah, Trevor that got stone skin. 
No, because I wanted to read. I've not read through any of them, so it doesn't matter. Right, do you want to so roll later I've... once you've read through it? Because you don't know the spell That's so well. Bad. That's fine. We'll we can do that. Yeah, we can roll offline for yours later if you want. Just because okay. you don't know the spell so well, it'll take a little bit longer to look. For ease of playing on, we can just do yours later if you want. Trevor's done all the levels, succeeded on loads, got some pretty cool stuff. Did you get Cloud Kill? Uh, did we? No, I don't think you did. Uh, sorry, That's Cloud Kill was... was uh, cloud Kill, yes, at 5th level. You did get Cloud Kill. Yep. Disintegrate at 6th, uh, Force Cage at 7th, and Prismatic Wall at 8th. And these are all for Kiara to attempt to learn as well, anyway. So Tre Trevor, Adam McCarr's already got a whole bunch of cool yeah. ones. Kiara will get there first, because we'll... she's the... Uh... the highest le Except Kiaba tops out at six level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She like can't so. cast higher than level six magic. Yeah. But that's a long way away for anybody just now, isn't it? Level six I magic is either. is level twelve. You have to be to cast it. Actually, I, with the fifteen intelligence, there's a limit to what. Uh... There's a limit to what level you can cast as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. There um... might not be any point trying for the level nines actually. <laughs> Seventh, yeah, I can't, I can't cast eighth level ones. Nice, you can only cast up to level seven. Kara can only cast up to level six. I might get another point of intelligence by then. These things happen in the legends. So we'll roll offline, roll offline for some more spells for Kara to pick up once you've had a better look at what's there. Because the guys know them off of like the back of We didn't get um. We didn't get uh, Stinking Cloud, did we? We didn't drive for Stinking Cloud. It's, that's yeah, a useful one we? against... Um, Do you want to roll for it? Against mobs. Do you want to roll for one more just now, then? Oh, let's, let's try Stinking Cloud. That's a good one for you know, mass encounters. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> Right at the beginning of the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got two copies. He's got two copies nice. of that one. There you go. He'll give you two. Um, there's two copies of Stinking... Was that Stinking Cloud, yeah? Yeah. That's a good spell. Yeah, it's, it's useful. So, are we... Is it the three-hour session in the ten? Uh, it's going to end very soon. Because yeah. I've only got this one scene for you tonight. And it's almost over. So, yeah. once you've taken some uh, scrolls and you can just rip them out of this book, he doesn't care, he's a dwarf, he's got no need for them. Um, you are invited to rest here in the church for the night. They've barred the doors. Um, yeah. It's not safe in any inns or taverns. It's People's houses are destroyed. Your home's not safe to go to your mother and father or your mother and Davin. I've been staying here. Uh, throughout the war, uh, working round the clock like all the other priests and clerics in the city. So you'll be given a clean quarter somewhere. Like there be a, like this is let's say, let's say this is like a downstairs in the in the church like down here, and you'll get this for your room for the night. Right. That that comes up here or something. We'll say. Um, so, does anybody want to do anything before it becomes time for you all to rest and try to study those spells? Just make sure that I spoke to everybody. And Dad was mom and Dad. I'm pretty nasty on my today, so I've... Um... Has anybody got any food? Yes, I have iron rations in my uh, backpack. No, yeah, sure no, I mean, like, yeah, no, sure I mean, do they have will... food in general here? Because we've got rations on it, so I Will heal any minor wounds the party had and offer what spells we have left? At mm -hmm. least Davo will, and I suspect Eleanor will, will be similar to the general populace if something's needed. You can put everyone up to full hit points. I'll go around doing it anyway. Yeah, I only need I only need seven hit, uh, four hit points. Yeah, you're in a church. There are other. I've not put a token for everybody on this map. There are other priests buzzing around. There are other injured people buzz like buzzing around. 
Um, Which will use the that bell the thing in spells as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone in the party can go to full hit points before you go to sleep. Yeah. Check you out. Right, so I'll put I always, feel, I always feel cheated when everybody's getting their head can I, and you're already on full on like Can I check something, Ryan? Yeah. The name of Darrow's father, was it Barak or Baruch? Baruch. And I see the similarity with Barak Thram, but Barak is a very common dwarven name and it's B A R R U K, your father's name where Barak Thram is B A R U K. So there is a similarity, but it's a <laughs> different spelling. Barak Copper Forge. Let me put it in the, the background bit of Davos. Oh, you're updating this bio. I've got a lot of updating of the wiki to do after this session. You've met a lot of new characters. We have a king, a prince. The prince has joined your group. Uh, edit. Bring that um, that blanket with us, just in case we need to preserve him. <laughs> how, can the, how can the dwarf be so squishy? Everything's squishy at level one. I've not rolled the set points yet. Who wants to roll them? I've been getting shit rolls, I'll roll them as soon as they get yeah. low hit points and he'll die. So you well, get... He, he's my follower, but as of then, if he's... Do, what do you... What's... For, for an adventurer, what's the starting hit points? Zero. Oh, hit points, right. So for an adventurer, I'm giving him the full level one bonus. So he gets, and I've not worked out his constitution yet, but his rolls will be 5 plus 1d10 divided by 2. Plus 6 plus 1d6 divided by 2. So no, it's d8. Three. Oh, oh, yeah, so it's 4 plus... 1d8 divided by 2. Oh, okay, so yeah. it's 9 plus nine, a d8. Plus 9 a plus d8 a d8 10. half to plus a d10 half, yeah. So, okay. shall I roll those? Yep, so he's got a 9. Uh, roll a d10. Uh, let this me... will depend on his constitution. We'll do that later. I'll do that later. But this is his hit point starting before we've done his constitution. All right. Okay. So that's the full five. Right. Roll the d eight. So that's uh, three, isn't it? Yep. No, uh, it's not. It's not. Sorry. It. That's two. Yeah, that's two. Yeah. One and two would have been one. No. Yeah. One and two would have been one. Three and four is two. Yeah, that's two. So nine plus five plus two is. 16. He starts, before I've done his constitution, with 16 hit points. So he's he's going to... Uh, so it won't be totally fragile. No. And I've yet to roll his constitution. We could get a couple more. So all these what dwarves get is a bonus, aren't they? Plus one and minus one charisma, yeah. I've not rolled this con yet. He could get a few more than that, but that's uh, his first stat rolled anyway. His hit points. You know, he got some decent rolls there, Peter, to be fair. That could have been a lot worse. He could have been a lot more squishy. So, do you choose to rest for the night here in the yeah. Church of Barracks, Ram? Okay. You have an interesting night's sleep, all of you. It's a mixture of dreams and nightmares. You, you see the war be something to do with the fact that you can hear the sounds of war in the distance way off in the distance you hear the sounds of war you hear the drums of war the soldiers marching you hear here in the city you hear the wails of the injured the the constant clang of the hammers making more and more weapons more and more city defenses barricades and spikes 
so you have a fitful night of sleep it's dreams mixed with nightmares you you're home darrow yeah. you feel good you you sleep well throughout the nightmares you don't wake you all dream of war but none of you wake you sleep well on your stone beds you all just sleep on on the stone of the of the church you are in the middle of a church you sleep on the stone with a couple of blankets down they are warm blankets but this is a dwarven city after all it's not the most comfortable the most lavish of places to be sleeping is a dwarven church but it's one of the most lavish places we've slept for a wee while we've been in that the king <laughs> the king sleeps with with you in, on the floor with his not a sleeping bag but with his just blankets on the concrete so does the prince so do the king's guard the king's guards take it in turns to sleep so do the the other two throne wardens that are on the door they take it in turns but everyone in the building stays in the building and in the morning you're awoken by a crash the door up here Burst open. We're still on the other map. Oh, you're still on the other map? Oh my god. I'll wait until you get there. Mm -hmm. The door here smashes open. Yeah. The, front, the front door. Yep, it smashes open. It's smashed off its hinges by something. There's a loud crash and bang, the doors go flying. And you see something come. Uh, let me just grab some baddies from a GM layer. The war has come to you. Yeah. Right. Sure. Saves us walking. Are Brown Rock and Copper Forge still in their places? They are. Uh, I've got them on the. I need to go to their layer. They are here. You think somebody would be, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. So they're there. And back to the GM layer. Because I've got more guys to bring over. Who ordered enemies for breakfast? Who ordered uh, enemies for breakfast? Because. Right, just, just line them up. I'm about to line you Kiara's some just, up. Kiara's just <laughs> relearned her lightning bolts. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm taking this in. Hold on. You're not going to fight them tonight. We'll do this in two weeks. No, but, but I can do it because I've, we've, I've... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pull some stuff onto the map, though, and you're going to see them all. So the doors up here at this top of the map here come crashing in, but also you hear a second bang, almost coordinated a split second later, and the wall over here comes crashing through. Which wall? Over here. Are you on the right layer to kind of indicate? I am not. <laughs> That's what I keep doing. Let me guess. It'll be the one on the east side. Yeah, yeah. So, mostly these are all behind them, but there's a bunch of drow and something else nasty comes behind a crashing ogre. A big giant ogre wielding a huge club has broke through the wall here and here as well. I've got two ogres. Yep, you got two ogres. And it appears half a dozen drow, two, yeah. gi two giant lizards, and half a dozen bugbears. So it's an, an almighty, unholy alliance. And they've crashed in at two fronts here and here. Let me yeah. see now. Well, bit. we can't get to there, so they're going to get to each other's way. Look at these big guys. Fargrim and Olgrim will just turn round. 
So, I right, remember whether ogres count as giants. Oh, yes, they do. For that, of spelly means. <laughs> so, you know, good wars. You get pluses against giants. Oh, yeah, for the pluses, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's an armor class bonus, isn't it? Yeah, minus four. Yeah. I find it hard to reach down that far. So, we'll, yeah, roll, for, it, we'll roll for initiative in two weeks. <laughs> yeah.